What is going on friends? It is Ben with Bearded Spruce back for another DIY project and today we're making this awesome little coffee stand for kids to play with. Um, I'm actually basically mimicking what my wife found online at Target. I'll put the image right up here of the one from Target. That one is actually $140 and when she saw it she's like can you make this but cuter and just add a little flavor of your own? And can you do it for cheaper? And I was like, let's do the math and find out. And it turns out that with some pre-sanded pine plywood from Lowe's or Home Depot or your nearest lumber store, uh, plus one of these kits on Amazon, I'll link to a few of them in the description below as well in affiliate links plus the legs you can put this all together for under a hundred dollars and to be honest you could actually go cheaper because i'm suggesting getting pre-sanded plywood but you could actually do a little bit more work with a sander obviously uh, and spend a little bit more time and get even cheaper unsanded plywood it's more like sheathing because um, the cool thing about a project like this is I'm planning on painting it uh, some fun colors and so you don't have to have super high quality plywood. I'm actually going to use just some scrap pieces that I have laying around but this project when I drew it out on a piece of plywood and did the math you can get all of what you need in one sheet. So. Go grab some cheap plywood and put in a little sanding time. Uh, I would suggest doing three quarters of an inch. You could actually go down to half an inch, especially if you want it to be a little lighter to move around the room. So my drawing here is an outline of what this project is going to entail. With the legs and this little overhang that you saw in the Target one that I had up a little bit before, um, I'm actually making mine 30 inches tall by 30 inches wide, including the overhang in the legs, which makes this kind of little box 24 by 24. And I think it will just look really nice and symmetrical. I'm also going to copy them and have like a little shelf that they can put like stuff on. And then I'm gonna do a little bit different twist on it. And I'm gonna do uh, some sliding doors that are going to be super colorful and fun for them to kind of like play with to kind of hide stuff and then on the other side since You're standing behind the coffee bar as the kid uh, Where these drawers are I'm going to put a full length optional chalkboard uh, paint so they could draw some pictures on there or do a little menu, um, kind of play with that kind of thing too. So all of this is going to be under a hundred dollars and I think it's going to be a super fun project and every time I build something for my kids it's super rewarding and they love it for years and years to come and I think it's just going to be more sturdy and better quality to be honest. So. First thing we gotta do is rip some of this plywood down to 14 inches deep. Uh, that's the depth of my project. All of the cut lists to down to the 16th of inch of what I cut for this build is gonna be in the description below, so check out those. I'm gonna kind of learn as I go, like a lot of these projects, and so with the sliding doors and that kind of stuff, I'm gonna cut things a little bit bigger than I need in the end to kind of fine tune as I build it. But you're here to join me in this journey. So I'm gonna cut some of this scrap pieces down to 14 inches um, and just run it all through my table saw. You could also use a circular saw if you'd rather. Totally up to you. Grab a straight edge um, and a circular saw if you're doing this on the cheap. Uh, since I do have the table saw, I'm going to use that. Now that I have all of the 
14 inch deep plywood uh, cut. So I have two different pieces that are gonna make up not only the shell, so the box plus a little hangover, it's also going to be the shelf inside. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is cut the three pieces that will make up the side, the bottom, and the other side out of this piece. And then I'm gonna use this other piece that's out of view um, for both the top piece and then the actual like shelf inside. So the three pieces that will be cut out of this piece will be all 24 inches. I'm gonna cut this on my circular, or my, uh, my uh, table saw because my circular saw behind me or my miter saw uh, doesn't go as deep as I need it since these are 14 inches deep. Um, you could use, again, a circular saw or whatever method you, you prefer. Okay, so now that we have all of the pieces cut to the right widths and depth, uh, we're going to use a dado blade, um, which is basically just like a thicker blade in my table saw. You can also use a router if you're more comfortable with that, or if you don't have a table saw, just go get a, a plunge router and you can do the same thing. Um, to build these sliding doors, I'm actually going to link to this really incredible video that I watched that kind of walked me through how to do this. I'm going to kind of show you what I am doing. A lot of it is experimenting, um, kind of going back and forth with trying to figure out exactly like how tall the doors are going to be and all that kind of stuff. Um, every project is slightly different because the opening is different, but the general consensus is you're going to cut two grooves in both the top and the bottom of the cabinet door area uh, where the doors go in, essentially the opening. And you want these to kind of be the same on the top and the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is cut the top piece first, which is the shorter of the two pieces, the 22 and a half inch. And then I'm gonna adjust my blade to cut the bottom exactly the same so I know that they are in line perfectly. And I'm using this set of spacers. Shout out to my mom, she actually bought them for me. Um, and the top groove is actually gonna be 3 eighths of an inch and then the bottom groove is gonna be an eighth of an inch and I'll kind of explain at a high level why that is when we cut the doors and install them. But basically so it's you can push it up a little bit and then drop the door in perfectly into the slot on the bottom. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do this process, uh, go through and cut all of the grooves. Check out the video that I linked and I have in the description below. He does an awesome job with diagrams and does a whole video on different ways you can do these sliding doors. I'm gonna do the simple version, the full thickness ones, because this is a kid's play thing and I'm not going for like a design award or something like that. Um, but you can feel free to mess with other styles. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these in both the top and the bottom, and then I'll join back for the assembly and the next couple steps. So you can see here that I am using the dado blade to cut the big gap. You could also do this without a dado blade and just move it over every couple millimeters until you get the right size, um, but it's a lot easier with a dado. And then here I'm using that spacer to lower the blade to the eighth of an inch instead of three eighths of an inch. And I will adjust it perfectly and then cut the bottom piece to match the top. Make sure that anytime you're adjusting the blade that you turn everything off and it's best practice to unplug the saw uh, when you're doing something like this. I've finished all four grooves as you can see here. They all perfectly match because like I said before I started, um, and you kind of saw in the video, I would cut the top one, which is 3 eighths of an inch, 
and then I would lower the blade to an eighth of an inch to cut the bottom groove to match. And then only then I would move it over for the next one um, and then not move anything with the table saw except for the height of the blade to cut a matching groove on the top side versus the bottom side. A uh, few things when you're doing something like this, you should definitely get some kind of gripper. These are not necessarily cheap, but they keep your hands away from the moving blade, which is a huge key. Um, and then if you're not comfortable doing the dado, uh, like I said, you can do the router. Um, just some kind of way to get this groove cut and precise. The other thing that you want to keep in mind is, so I'm going to use actually half inch plywood for the doors. Uh, you could just use the same thickness of plywood that you bought earlier in the video for the rest of the, the cabinet, but um, I had some half inch plywood and I kind of like the look of that half inch a little better. Uh, one thing that you want to note is when you're cutting these, you don't do just perfectly the same size. You actually add about a sixteenth of an inch wider. So the, there's a little bit of play. I don't know if you can see in the video here, but there's just enough play in these grooves so you can slide the doors back and forth. So keep that in mind um, when you're setting up your dado blade or your router. If you need to, just like inch over your fence, just like a, a sixteenth of an inch, so you can get that little bit of play so you can move the doors. So next we're gonna do is assemble the actual cabinet. I'm gonna use pocket screws for this build. Um, I think that paired with some wood glue is a really strong way to build something and easy uh, to kind of line things up and drill your pocket holes. So I'm gonna move on to that next step and we'll get going. So now that we have everything cut and the grooves cut, now it's time to drill the pocket hole screws. And if you don't have one of these Craig branded pocket hole jigs that clamps to a countertop or some kind of spot, um, you don't even have to adjust anything on the base itself for different cuts. All you have to do is adjust, I don't know if you can see that, um, to the thickness of whatever material you're actually attaching to. So I adjusted mine to three quarters of an inch, this little depth gauge. And then the rest is all pretty easy. Uh, you just use a drill that you probably, hopefully already have. Um, and then all you have to do to do this is put your material in, make sure it's level. Uh, they even include these little level kits so you can kind of make sure that everything's stable before you clamp it down. And then you just drill your hole. And this one, I didn't turn it on for the first one, but this one actually has a dust collection section on the other side. So you just turn that on and it is actually cleaner holes when the dust collector's on and it's just like a breeze to use. So I'm gonna drill these holes. Something to keep in mind is you're gonna put holes for the pocket hole screws on both the bottom and the top of the side pieces of the cabinet. I'm gonna put them on the inside so you can't see them when you're looking at the furniture from the outside, but it's totally up to you. Um, I'm gonna do three holes on all, you know, top and bottom, and then we'll get assembly. So now we've done all the pocket holes and got everything set up. Um, one thing to note when you're doing these, I tend to put them towards the back of the cabinet just because when the doors are slightly open or uh, you don't want it to be like lining up with where your doors are going to be, especially if you're going to do doors with hinges, you'll need to have some clear space a few inches here in the front, like an inch and a half, that uh, doesn't have any pocket holes uh, visible or kind of in the way of that hardware. So now uh, we're going to line everything up and we're just going to put some glue 
on both pieces. For the pocket screws, I'm using an inch and a quarter, or if you're into millimeters, they're 32 millimeters. Uh, that seems to work well with three quarter inch ply. I've done a bunch of cabinets this way and they seem to be pretty good. So I'm gonna do this. So we're gonna do a bead of glue and don't worry about squeeze out or you know anything spilling. We'll clean it up in a bit, but basically we're going to stick that there. Stick them right in there. And then the jig that I was showing earlier comes with a special square head uh, bit that you use to fasten these guys. Just like that. All right, so once you get the bottom uh, squared away, you can wipe out the glue excess at this point, or we can sand it away later. Um, and then I put the top on, which is actually the bottom, and then we're gonna make sure this is all squared up and fasten those screws on both sides. And we'll move on to the shelf. So I had to do a little discovery on this one, but what I did was I wanted this opening to be a little less than 12 inches and then this shelf to be about 12 inches as well. So I measured 12 inches from the, this is actually flipped upside down so it's a little hard to understand, but I'll explain why. So I'm going to drill some pocket holes in this shelf that's also gonna be the top track for the doors, the sliding doors. And to do that, I, put two pieces of scrap wood with some uh, clamps right here and the same thing over here and made those perfectly level um, across and back to front. And then what I'm gonna do is drill some pocket holes on the inside. So the pocket holes are all on the inside of everything. Uh, so when the cabinets close, you can't see them on the outside, right? Or on the top of the shelf. And so I'm going to drill some pocket holes here and then come back and screw those all in. Uh, so the cabinet top is in place. That's also the shelf uh, when it's flipped over. Guys, we got it to work. So um, both of my doors are 12 inches wide because the inside dimensions is like 22 and a half that we cut this you know, shelf to. Um, and then I will give the exact dimension, actually I'll do it right now. And then for me, and this might be a slightly different for you guys, so basically what I did was, again, watch that video that I linked to in the description below. He is just a beautiful teacher and uh, I want to give all the props to him because I did not know how to do this beforehand. Um, basically what I did was I measured an eighth of an inch down from the top of this bottom piece and then three eighths of an inch to uh, above this which gave me eleven and three quarters of an inch. I made one of the doors eleven and three quarters of an inch and then I came over and just kind of messed with it and basically hopefully you can see this um, you shove the top of the door up into the bigger groove up there and then it just kind of plops right down into the shallow groove and then it slides back and forth uh, once I sand everything and make it all smooth it'll be a lot smoother of an operation but you really just got to kind of Take the initial measurement of everything that you've cut out, and he does a way better job explaining this. So an eighth of an inch down below and three eighths of an inch up top. Measure that height, cut your door height to that exact height, and then go back and forth trying, uh, just like uh, the width of the blade, shaving it off over and over again until you get the right height. And for me, to give you an idea, um, I ended up taking another quarter of an inch off, so I'm at 11 and a half inches, um, and I started out at 11 and three quarters. 
So that might be the trick. I can't remember what he said in the video exactly, but I just remember him kind of doing the same thing where he'd fit it in and then kind of fine tune um, when it wasn't quite fitting. So one thing you'll notice is I cut them both to 12 inches wide. And then like I mentioned before, kind of figured out the exact height. Um, I wanted them to overlap a little bit. So when they're both fully closed, um, you can't see in the cabinet. And I don't know, it's a kid's cabinet. It's not a big deal, but I kind of wanted that overlap to kind of test that out. So now that I have that all cut and good to go, um, I'm gonna drill holes with a Forstner bit over on my drill press um, in the corners, because I, I really like that design. Um, I've done it for a, other cabinets and I really like how that works. And then it's really easy to like have kids just like grab the hole and smooth, like slide it across. So I'm gonna do that and then sand everything and then we'll put the legs on, paint the thing. Uh, we're getting close, we're getting real close. All right, so I'm going to use this Forstner bit uh, to drill a hole right here uh, where you can kind of see the laser maybe. Um, and you always want to have a scrap piece of plywood or something scrap piece underneath because you want to drill all the way through, right? Um, and you don't want to drill into your table on your drill press. I actually have a full review on this drill press. Uh, I'll link up here. Um, it's an awesome drill press for really inexpensive. So if you're looking to get into some kind of like precision holes and that kind of stuff, uh, something like this. I did a bunch of cabinets like this and it just worked out so well. So I'm gonna drill this, make sure that you're using a clamp and all the safety precautions. Um, and then I'll drill that other one. I did an inch and a half from the corner. So an inch and a half from the top of the door and the side of the door, um, it kind of looked good on my other project. So I kind of copied that. So. Let's get this rolling and we'll get this drilled. So there is the first door. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other one and then we'll pop them in and see how they look. So I got the doors, uh, holes drilled. I ended up putting them on the bottom because it just works a lot better uh, to slide it. And um, I started sanding a little bit. As you can see, it catches a little bit still, so I, I need to do some more sanding. Um, but man, what a cool little project so far. So now I'm gonna sand everything, and then I gotta figure out what colors to do. Um, and then the legs will get in today or tomorrow, and I'll keep working on this project. And then the last big piece of plywood that I need is I'm gonna put one on the back here um, and then paint it with chalkboard paint so the kids can kind of use their imagination and draw some pictures of like croissants or write a little menu or something like that on there. So the last step before we start sanding everything and getting it ready to finish is putting on this back panel. And this is actually uh, five millimeter. Um, you can also use quarter inch plywood. It's super inexpensive. It's like 12 bucks for a, uh, might actually be less, um, at your local Lowe's or Home Depot. You can just pick up a two by four foot sheet of this. You could also use the three quarters of an inch or whatever you are building the rest of the cabinet with. But um, I just had some, so I figured I would just cut this piece down and attach it. So. I did a bead of glue all around the edge where it's gonna be in contact with the back of the cabinet. And then you're just gonna uh, take this, line it up with the top edge and tack it into place um, using a nail gun or little nails or screws, whatever you choose to, I just have a nail gun. If you're gonna do something like this with a nail gun, definitely use like a um, 18, gauge nail so the heads don't show um, but you could also just get, get some screws and fill in uh, with some wood putty or something like that if you're worried about it the cool part about this is we're going to paint it black with that chalkboard paint so it doesn't have to be high quality um, you can just get whatever the cheapest 
thin plywood is. So I got the legs in now and I'm gonna put one in each corner, all four corners obviously. The cool thing about these that I'll link to is some of these legs are really tough to not scrape when you're trying to screw them in with you know some screws. <clears throat> so the top actually comes off and you can mount the actual mounting hardware on and then after you have it all screwed in you can put these legs in which is super awesome put these four legs on and then we'll come back and discuss finishing the project now that i have the legs installed it's time to really make this your own so at this point you could honestly just get a nice water-based poly uh, that won't yellow the wood and just do a few coats of polyurethane. Um, I'm actually going to do an extra step and do some fun colors. Uh, I really like the exposed edge on the plywood. Um, so I'm gonna do all of the surfaces except for the exposed, exposed plywood. Um, but if you wanted a more refined look, you could actually get some edge banding that you iron on um, and then either paint that whole thing uh, the same color or multiple colors. Um, I'll show you the finished product in a bit, but uh, I have two girls and a wife that loves fun colors. And so I'm going to do the whole thing in green and then my daughter's actually going to help me paint the doors in a pink that she picked out. Um, once that's all done, I'm going to do a few coats of water-based polyurethane to really protect it. Um, and then we will showcase the finished product. So here it is, final reveal. Uh, I ended up painting just the sides like I mentioned leaving the edges bare because we really like the aesthetic of seeing the plywood exposed on the side there. Um, and then I painted the doors a different color. My daughter actually helped with painting the doors. She chose the pink color and my wife ch chose this like fun green kind of earthy color. Uh, the doors turned out so well. Right when I got finished with it and my daughters saw it, they made me bring it inside and they played with it for hours on end. I'll link to the little coffee shop toys and accessories that we ended up buying on Amazon. They really like those that you'll see in the description of the video card. Um, and, you know, there's just a fun amount of customization that you can do with this. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, you could paint the whole thing one color. You could choose different legs. There are just endless options when it comes to this. I will have the cut list for this exact size. Uh, it worked out so well. I have a just over a one-year-old that could play in this space with a bunch of toys, and then my five-year-old could reach all this stuff. So it's kind of a toy that can grow with them. And then I ended up I ended up doing a chalkboard, like I mentioned, uh, with chalkboard paint on the bottom here, kind of facing out so the, the kids kind of stand back here and have the, the cabinet to play with. And then they could draw pictures of croissants or draw a little menu with chalk that's easily erasable. Um, I ended up doing three coats of the chalkboard paint that I'll link to in the description below in the affiliate links, along with the rest of the supplies that I needed for this build. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. It was a super fun project. I think you guys will have a blast building this and feel free to ask any questions, uh, have concerns, put it in the comment below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, we're about to have a reveal of a mountain house uh, that we have been building for over two years now. Uh, it finally got painted last week and we're gonna have a few projects up there, uh, stuff like building a, a mantle above the fireplace and some refinishing of some spaces, like a backsplash that we've been dreaming of for a while and just kind of some unique touches to that uh, rental property that we're gonna be uh, opening up pretty soon. So feel free to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and we will see you next time.